Our next speakers are Paxton Booth, the Executive Director of Corruption Strategy, Prevention and Legal, and Liz Fulger, the Executive Director of our Inter Integrity Services area. And Paxton and Liz will give an overview of the Triple C's Corruption Strategy discussion paper from last December, which I think a number of you would have had input into. So please, I'll hand it over to Paxton and Liz. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. As Jeff said, my name's Paxton Booth. Uh, I'm uh, in charge of the strategic intelligence area at the Commission, as well as the audits um, prevention area and also our corruption legal offices. Uh, today I'll be talking about the, um, this up on the screen. Uh, an overview of the corruption strategy that many of you participated in um, last year and the beginning of this year as well. Um, the objective of the strategy was really fourfold. Uh, the first two dot points you can see on your screen were about identifying a coordinated approach to deliver activities uh, with the greatest impact and then establishing some quantitative and qualitative measures of the impact uh, for those prevention activities that we work on. So they're really aimed at establishing a new um, strategy for our prevention work and making sure that what we do in the prevention space delivers both value and that we can demonstrate to you that we are actually making some improvements in the delivery of the products that we provide. Uh, the second part of it was about identifying when and how we collaborate with our stakeholders and to become more proactive in our responses to emerging corruption risks. Uh, that's in relation to both our investigative activity, uh, our assessments and reviews, and of course, our prevention work. Uh, key to that is understanding your needs and how we can best uh, address those. Um, so that was the purpose largely for our engagement with you uh, towards the second half of last year and the beginning of this year. Uh, we are al always looking for opportunities to engage with the agencies in a proactive way and um, always willing to hear your feedback on how we can best do that. So what did we do? We started off the process with the literature review uh, around prevention methodologies and measures of impact. Essentially what we found was that there wasn't a particular model that we could ad uh, adopt within the Triple C uh, that was already up and running anywhere. So what we've done is come up with our own uh, combination of what we, what we say is best practice and I'll go through that in, in, a, in a moment. And then we also then conducted a series of stakeholder engagement opportunities, which was uh, first by the delivering of a discussion paper for which we received 55 submissions. So thank you to everyone who took the time to um, provide a submission to us. And then we had a number of direct engagements via interviews. So we had uh, 85 direct engagements with various UPAs across the state, which was very useful and very insightful. Um, so now I'll go back and just talk about um, the literature review for a moment and our new approach to corruption prevention. So what we've done is developed a five-step process for our corruption prevention methodology going forward starting next financial year. We're going to start by identifying high-risk areas of focus and we'll do that through further engagement with, um, with the agencies and using our own data that we've got within our um, existing holdings. Once we identify the high-risk area, what we're going to do is develop a, a logic model which sets out the relationship between what we say is the problem or the risk in corruption and then demonstrates the outcome we want. So how are we going to get from current state to future state with reduced corruption risks? Uh, we'll do that by conducting a number of measures. Um, some of those will be qualitative and some will be quantitative. Uh, the way we're going to deliver the corruption prevention work will be a little bit different too. It's going to be a much more broad-based delivery of uh, products. So we're going to look at a number of situational opportunities when we engage with UPAs going forwards, which will uh, make sure that we're looking at increasing effort, making it harder for people to commit the types of corrupt conduct that we're seeing, uh, increase the risk, so uh, improving the detection of the types of corrupt conduct we're seeing, uh, reduce, the re reduce the rewards, so making sure that we've got the right balance uh, with sanctions um, that get imposed in relation to that type of conduct. Uh, and then lastly, um, sorry, I should say fourthly, uh, reduce the provocation. So understanding why is it that people are actually engaging in this activity and trying to reduce the, um, I suppose, the motivations for people engaging in it. And then lastly, uh, removing the excuses. So making sure that training's up to date, there are plenty of resources for people and staff to uh, understand what their obligations are in relation to their behaviour at work. So in relation to what we found during our engagement, um, look, I must say it was very insightful and again I thank everyone who participated in it. Um, what we found was 
people wanted better access to C officers. So this ranged from both in our assessments area, our reviews and our investigators. Uh, one of the things that Liz will be talking about a bit more in detail would be um, more, more opportunities to engage in our officers with um, pre-assessment advice. Um, looking for more information about the reasons for our decisions. So there was a lot of feedback that there were perceptions that some of the decisions we were making um, weren't transparent and were perhaps seen as um, um, difficult to evaluate with an earlier one. So a perception that they were a little bit inconsistent. Um, you're looking for greater support from our investigations that were referred to agencies to undertake, uh, particularly in relation to um, Section 15.2. Uh, and more collaboration via joint investigations and access to our powers to assist with some of those investigations. Uh, also increased education and training about topics that are in our prevention and focus um, guide and more information about our emerging corruption risks. And you will have heard from a number of people today speaking that a lot of the topics we're discussing today are actually derived from that engagement strategy that we've had. So again, we're trying to provide you with much, as much relevant information that you find useful as we can. Uh, and additional context and communication with our prevention products, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. So what are our next steps? Um, I'm not going to step on Liz's, Liz's feet, so she's going to talk about um, some of the things that they're going to deliver in integrity services as a result of the feedback we've been, we've been given. Uh, but some of the things I will talk about is uh, more webinars to, should say, improve engagement with our prevention products. So we're already planning one for early June. Uh, we did an uh, audit in relation to local government and procurement earlier this year, and we intend to deliver some feedback around the corruption risks we identified during that audit through a webinar and some papers. Uh, more collaboration in the design and content of our, of our prevention products. So we're going to be looking to you and communicating with you more about what you want to see in our prevention products, how, uh, what is it that's useful for you and your staff, and a more strategic approach to the delivery of our prevention material, which I covered just a moment ago. So some of the engagements we'll have will be more long term. Uh, once we identify a particular area of risk or focus, uh, we'll stay with that topic uh, for a number of months and deliver a series of materials um, to agencies around those risks and with the added advantage that we're going to continue to measure um, the effectiveness of what we're delivering and um, whether we're seeing an improvement in those risks. Uh, some of the other things that are going on still uh, under consideration where they require more resourcing. So for example, access to more advice in relation to our uh, investigations or investigation officers. Uh, we're looking how we can better resource um, um, advice to you when you're conducting your own investigations about best practice in investigations, particularly if you find an area where it's uh, a little uncertain about what to do next. Uh, making advice available from our own investigations uh, that you can contact either email or phone um, to get some more information around what to do next. Uh, there's also a number of suggestions and requests that we received during the course of the uh, stakeholder engagement which we're still working on. So a number of people asked and come up with some really great ideas around how we can better resource you uh, with some additional, uh, I suppose, um, products that will help you do your work. Uh, one of those, for example, was around um, how long should an investigation take? Do we have a framework to help you provide information around what's, what's a good time frame to complete an investigation? Um, so some of those models we're working on uh, still at the moment. Uh, and then lastly, once the corruption strategy is approved, we will publish that so that you can see it and, um, yeah, and see what we're doing. So some of the next steps um, we're going to undertake, I mentioned further engagement and further webinars. So Jeff will talk a little bit about this at the conclusion of the presentation today around uh, a survey. We're going to ask for more information around more topics. Um, so some of the things, I suppose, just putting it out there, we want to see um, more presentations by the Commission in relation to those grey areas. So how can we help you understand what your responsibilities are and what the responsibilities of your employees are a bit better? Uh, again, some of the topics that came up during the course of our stakeholder engagement were around what actually is a breach of the trust? When does that apply? Um, you know, what does that entail? How do I know my employees have engaged in a breach of trust? Um, what's the definition of it? Um, some of the others are around when is an allegation serious enough to warrant dismissal? Sometimes uh, you know, the, the outcome of the investigation may result in someone getting uh, a warning or something that's you know, far, far below the sanction of, a, of dismissal, but is it something that um, 
reaches the threshold for reporting corrupt conduct when the actual outcome doesn't actually result in a dismissal. So there's some of the things that people have spoken to us about during the um, stakeholder engagement, which were really interesting and interesting topics to talk about. Um, so that's it for me. And as all the other presenters have said today, um, please get in contact with us if you've got any ideas or suggestions. We're more than welcome to, um, to hear those and look forward to working with you in the future. I'll hand over to Liz. Thanks, Paxton, uh, and thanks everyone um, for the opportunity to have a chat to you today. We really appreciate it. Um, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I also wanted to once again thank everybody for their participation in all of the stakeholder feedback around the corruption prevention strategy. Um, it's always good to receive quality, critical feedback and to get a really good understanding of what the current perceptions of the C are out amongst all of the units of public administration. Um, we know what we think. This is a really good chance to get an idea of what you think and what your views are. We're already working, as Paxton has indicated, to see how we can meet the needs that you've expressed and address the various issues that you've raised. And we agree that they're excellent points that you've brought up. Uh, at the moment, we're looking at pushing our resources around so that we can better provide you with pre-assessment advice, for example. Uh, we've got a number of proposals for projects in um, and hopefully we'll be delivering those in the next financial year. We were, of course, already doing a range of activities and some of those I think are going to meet your needs and will be of interest to you today. So one of the first initiatives that we already have going is that we're going to produce a quarterly newsletter that will go out to all of the C liaison officers. It's an opportunity for us to talk about case studies that we've seen recently. Um, to raise more broadly questions that we've been asked and answered which pertain to issues that are across the public sector uh, and also to give you more information about what happens when we do a public interest review or a man and compliance review for those of you that have less exposure to those activities so that when comes, one comes your way you'll better understand how to deal and respond to it. Importantly, in our very first newsletter, we're going to give you some information about the Integrity Services team, about myself, about the two directors and about the other key staff that you should contact when you have various questions. That information will include our direct phone numbers because I understand some people have had difficulty contacting us and also our email addresses. For those of you listening on today, uh, until you have those details, my number, which I'm prepared to share with you, is 3360-6285. So if, have, if you have a question about a matter that you need answered, feel free to pick up the phone and give me a call. If I can't answer it, I'm going to pass you on to the appropriate staff member and give you their direct contact details. The first edition of that should come out in the first quarter of the next financial year. The other thing that we got a lot of feedback about, unsurprisingly, was assessment timeframes. For those of you that don't know, we currently have a key performance indicator that basically says 85% of complaints or notifications incoming to the C should be assessed within 30 days. Now I know there was a time when a lot of matters weren't being assessed within 30 days, but as recently as Friday of last week, we're currently sitting at 92% of matters being assessed within those timeframes this year and we're currently striving to improve that. I'm going to talk a little bit about this later because I know many of you will be saying 30 days is still a long time. We need information sooner and we are going to try and deliver on that and I'll talk to you about that a little bit in a minute. The other thing I wanted to mention which is a very important initiative that we're doing at the moment in response to our reconciliation action plan is about how we engage with members of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community. We've got a project going on at the moment. We have reached out to all of the UPAs through various networks and invited them to be engaged in it. We have employed consultants and we have a strong focus on how to make sure that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people can engage with us in a culturally safe way to ensure that their complaints and their concerns are being brought to our attention and appropriately actioned. The other big initiative we have going at the moment we call colloquially 2.0, which will mean nothing to you but means a lot to me. At any rate, two of the key issues that we're addressing in that project which are going to be of interest to you are, firstly, we're developing a decision-making matrix that will assist C officers when they're assessing decisions to ensure that we do so in a consistent way. 
I do understand that there have been considerable concerns raised in the course of the feedback about a lack of consistency in decision making. Um, so we are putting together this framework which will hopefully help rectify that situation and which we will ideally be able to share with you. In the interim, can I encourage an agency, if you see an inconsistency in decision making, to contact us so that we can discuss that inconsistency. It may be that the matter turns on particular individual facts that are not necessarily immediately apparent to you and which may be the result of inquiries that we ourselves undertook. The other big part of Lean 2.0 from your perspective is a pilot program we're going to run in the first half of the new financial year. We're looking at getting into a time frame of 14 day assessments for notifications from units of public administration. We'll run it initially as a pilot program and we'll be inviting agencies to express their interest in being involved in that pilot program. The program will involve a little bit of give and take on both sides. In other words, in order for us to be able to deliver you matters within that 14 day time frame, we're going to ask for you to report to us in a particular way and to use a particular Section 40 agreement. So if you're interested in being involved in that project, um, please do listen in. We'll be providing more information about it and giving you an opportunity to express your interest. The last thing I want to talk today about is training and information sessions. In the new year, we're hoping to offer a range of more detailed training um, that's basically delivering on the topics in Corruption in Focus. But in the interim, I want to remind you that Integrity Services is always open to delivering a presentation to you about what it is that we're doing or to help you understand Section 15 of the Act, Section 15.2 of the Act or how reviews are undertaken. We've done a number of those president, uh, presentations in recent times for hospital and health services and for departments. If you're interested in a presentation of that nature, please um, give me a call. We can talk about what your needs are and we can arrange for something to be delivered in good time. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to have a chat to you today. I've tried to speak very quickly so that now I can hand back to Jeff and we can answer some of the questions that you've sent through.